Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. The rest of the floors here and down. Um, I think that's going to work pretty good now. Water can go wherever it flipping likes. <laughs> and um, it does feel very comfortable to walk on. It's got a bit of give in it because it's plastic. Um, yeah, I like it. Um, I like it a lot actually. It's working, you know, it's going to work basically. I can chuck water all over the place and not worry anymore. And if any time I need to clean underneath, it just lifts up. You know, the pieces just snap together. So that's working well. Um, I'm aware that I've got everything in bloom on the 8th. And um, I'm going to pick on a few things that <laughs> I don't think are going to make it to the 8th and they're in full bloom. So I don't want to miss them. So I want to catch those first. Um, this uh, farmer I cross with Griffithianum, they are quite short-lived blooms. Um, they're a good show, you know, they, they're, they're good spikes, multiple blooms, lovely sort of coloration and everything. I really do like these, but they are short-lived. Um, there's definitely more to come. There's another, another big one up here lurking under the leaf like they do. They hide under the leaf and then they just suddenly spring out and burst into life. Um, very fast growing spikes, incredibly fast, the fastest spikes I've got by far. Um, and I do have another one of these that came from Beatrix up the back there that I think is showing signs of uh, pushing some spikes out. That will be interesting because um, the tag on mine said Farmer I cross with Griffithianum, whereas the one from Beatrix has got a registered name but the registration is Griffithianum crossed with Farmeri. Well, if you do the cross the other way round, you don't necessarily get the same results. And you have to bear in mind that one of the two plants going into this cross is actually yellow, not white. They've both got the yellow center, but one of them is yellow, one of them is white. And if that cross is the other way round, I may get some pale yellow instead of white. I don't know till it happens, but you know, just a thought as they say. Um, <clears throat> what else? Oh yes, the um, Dendrobium Findlayanum has got most of its blooms out now. And um, because that's its first time blooming, I don't know how long they're going to last. But that is looking absolutely stunning. And I know if I could get that to an Orchid Society meeting, that would do well. <laughs> so I don't know anybody else is growing this. <laughs> so it would do well. It's a, it's a lovely healthy plant. It's got good progression on it. Good, really good root system. Looks like it's got some more buds to come on some of the older canes. So um, it's doing really well. Uh, unfortunately, the next Orchid Society meeting is the middle of April. I don't think it's going to make it. It's just annoying when that happens, but that's life. You know, it means apart from the YouTube world, nobody else is going to get to see it. And there's no substitute for seeing plants in real life. I've discovered that many, many times. But these blooms are gorgeous. Combination of colours, delicate pink, pure white, deep gold, and quite large. So uh, as dendrobiums go, lovely and first time blooming. Absolutely smashing. Another one that might not make it till the 8th, although this spike is lasting an awful lot longer than I expected. Um, and I still don't know why I expected them to be relatively short-lived, because I've never had a Cristata bloom for me before. But they're lasting well. Um, I think they may just be showing signs of going over. But nonetheless, I was well pleased for a first time blooming, good spike. And half the buds looked like they were going to blast, and then they didn't, so well pleased with that. Um, Rhodostictum lasts ages, but then these blooms have been out ages, so I'm not quite sure whether they'll make it for that video or not. Lovely strong new growth coming out of the base there. Good. <laughs> That's the next lot of blooms coming there. So it'll be a while before the next spike comes and blooms, but um, when they do, they last ages. All the Latoria types do. So that's good. Now this Dendrobium Hancockii, the first bloom to open, there are more to come. And these are actually classed as long-lasting. We'll see how long. 
<laughs> but the first bloom's fully open now. I mean, I haven't had this long enough to say it is a first time bloomer, but it was, you know, bought as a mature plant. So it's not like I've had to bring the plant on to get it to blooming size, it already was. There are quite a few buds lurking on this one. There's some more down here. And there's others, you know, in their infancy, just starting their uh, canes out. So, uh, yeah, first time bloomer, but. Um, I think I was really, in the back of my mind, I was expecting this to bloom on a flipping plant this size, endearingly known as the bush. Oh, and I forgot to say, this one is supposed to be fragrant of a, a reminiscence of a honey smell. And it is! <laughs> Trouble is, different noses have uh, a, a different appreciation of fragrance, so when you get it written down that it smells of honey, it's still down to your own nose whether it does or not. But yeah, it, it, it's got a very faint scent of honey. You've got to get your nose right in there, but um, at least it's there. If it gets a bit of bright light on it later, it may uh, push out the fragrance a bit more. But it's a new bloom. It's only just fully opened. They often don't push their fragrance out for a while. So uh, we'll see how that one goes. There's not much else that's fragrant in here at the moment. Well, these Cattleya blooms are starting to go now, so uh, that spike will have to come off soon. I, d I don't believe in leaving the spikes on till the plants are the blooms are absolutely dead and dropped off and everything, because certainly with Cattleyas there seems to be a trigger mechanism, and while the blooms are still on the plant, it's sometimes reluctant to push on the new growths. So um, you know, once the blooms start to look a bit jaded. I don't see a huge amount of point in leaving them there, but that's fragrant, but better still, <laughs> it's sister, because they're both the same plant, it was split because it wouldn't go in the pot. You know, sometimes that's a reason for splitting a plant, you know, it just won't go in the pot. You know, they get bigger and bigger and spread out more and more, and you've got the new leads hanging over the edge of the pot, well, you know, that's a good time to possibly think about splitting it providing you've got multiple leads, but this is highly fragrant. These are beautiful blooms. And um, what I'm looking for on both of those plants is multiple growths this year. They've both chucked out huge root systems. They've got the backup to push out more than one eye this time, if there's eyes there, obviously. So we'll see what we can do with that. But uh, yeah, these are gorgeous blooms, so I'm getting happy sap all over my fingers now. <laughs> Especially when the light catches them like this. Lovely markings, lovely colours, and highly fragrant. Smells of freesias. Gorgeous. But um, as Cattleyas go, they last reasonably well. I mean, I think the blooms on the other one have been out some considerable time. And this one's been open about, I think, about a week, something like that. So I've got plenty of time left on this one, I would say. And this disappointment, because um, this was uh, bought as Victoria Reginae, but with a colour like that, it's not. It's probably a cross. Um, I know where it came from as well, and I'm always a bit, bit suspect on the old plant naming and getting the right pictures up, but um, it's attractive nonetheless. It holds its own if they last well. Otherwise, because it's not what I actually thought I'd bought, I will probably pass this one on. It's a bit of a kiki machine. I've got three large kikis with open leaves pushing out roots now, so they can come off soon and make another little pot full. That'll be three kikis in a pot. That's a, a, a nice sort of um, gift or purchase for somebody a bit later down the line when I get round to it. And this cane's pushing out three kikis as well. I don't think they're buds, but it's a wait and see. But this is the old cane where I was expecting it to bloom, the old leafless cane. And I was expecting the beautiful deep purple. And what did we get? Flipping pink. Uh, I don't mind clonal names of, um, of species, you know, where there is a distinct colour variation and you've bought it for that reason. But this was sold as the real thing, and the real thing it ain't. And this uh, lovely splash of orange, um, quite a bit of orange, <laughs> the trouble is the blooms are coming out in all directions. I can't get this plant in a place where it can show off a bit better, but you know, I've got the, the best spike with the best blooms on 
pointing out towards the grow room so I at least get to see it. Um, so no ID this thing because there's so many hybrids along the lines of this that it, it would be almost impossible to identify. But it's definitely got Dendrobium unicum in it but it's got other stuff in it too because it definitely isn't the species. But nonetheless very attractive and although it's bloomed for me before I've forgotten how long the blooms last so uh, we'll see how it goes. It's a right tatty looking plant but with all the new growths pushing up I can tidy it. You know when the canes get to being totally shriveled like this um, those old canes can come off and leave room for the newer growths and then we'll see how it does this year but it's, it is pushing out a lot of new growths, four or five at the moment so those are replacement canes you know with that number of canes there's quite a few can come off all the ones that are in bloom now need to stay because they're healthy green canes yeah so they do support the plant but the tatty old wrinkled ones can go and they'll be replaced by the new ones I mean some say never kept cut the canes off of deciduous dendrobiums I personally do not agree if it makes your plant look tatty and you get fed up with looking at it well tidy it up but make sure you take the oldest shriveled canes off once you've got new growths pushing on well and leave some good green not shriveled canes to support those new growths otherwise you could weaken the plant so you need to go steady taking old canes off but there comes a point where they serve no purpose at all they're shriveled they're dead they're not supporting the plant anymore they're just in the way so they can come off soon. And my little Orangus fastuosa is probably not going to make the eighth. These blooms have been out a while, but they're starting to get the brown tinges in places, so they're probably going to drop soon. But um, I, again, I can't remember how long the blooms lasted last time, but they lasted a reasonable time. And for the size of this plant, which is a genuine miniature, those are large blooms, you know, given the size of the plant. So uh, uh, this one just seems to grow reasonably well for me. It's got a plant that out the side, its main plant, which is just starting a new leaf. So um, it grows quite well for me. It does OK. Now this monster Cylogeny that just hides in the background, basically, I was disappointed last year because it pushed up new growths but it didn't have a root system to back them up. Um, now this one grew really well and has nice leaves on it. That one over there you can see the state of the leaves, that's just lack of hydration. This plant is renowned for that. If you don't keep this thing hydrated it will get distorted leaves. And in addition to that the bloom spike failed. but. Um, Chatting to Arthur at um, Burnham's at the show on Saturday. I love chatting to Arthur. <laughs> He's a good friend. Um, they had one in bloom. And so first question to Arthur was, do you know how long these blooms last? He said, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> so he's really helpful on that front. But nonetheless, these bloom out of the new growths well before the new growths are mature. So if you look at the top of that largest growth, that's the spike. So it's going to bloom and it's no reason why it shouldn't bloom on the other two growths as well. Very large um, cylogeny blooms, pendulous spike, it arches over, um, but large. That's um, cylogeny moriana and it's the named clone Brockhurst. Um, actually I think it's moriana magnifica Brockhurst, but the tag wasn't big enough. <laughs> But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, as I say, the only spike I've ever had on last year's new growth, this one I believe, actually aborted. And you're not going to do that this year. You've got a good root system and I chuck water on you frequently. So you should be okay this year. And no more distorted leaves, please. Nice leaves like these. Coming on. Right, the uh, Dendrobium of Phylum that I got from Alberto, that's finished now. Those are the last two blooms. So they are quite short-lived. But for a kiki, I was pleased I even got some blooms. I'm pleased with that. And my, um, just checks the tag, Primulinum. Why do I always forget this one? The blooms on this are gorgeous, but again, they're short-lived. And um, for a plant that was almost lost, last year's growths pushed on reasonably well, and they bloomed. So I'm pleased, and we've got new growths coming out of the base too. So this, this plant's nicely recovered now. 
I could do with more than two new growths. Oh no, there's three. There's another one. But yeah, these blooms are open now. These this these will be the last ones on this cane. But I mean that's not bad, you know, this two, four, six, eight on that cane. So there'll be a succession. These are just starting to crack and just open. But you're lucky to get two weeks out of them, you know. But they are gorgeous when they do open. But it's the type of dendrobium, if you're gonna keep these sort, a lot of them are short-lived and they only bloom once a year, late winter, early spring, that's your lot. And then you have to work hard through the summer season or the growing season, get those new canes as big as possible, big, strong, healthy canes to go into the next winter rest and produce these. And I like doing that. Now I've got that rest off reasonably well. I like doing it. And most of these types of dendrobiums are quite long caned, so they can go up in the roof and just hang. So that <laughs> even though they're enormous, they don't actually get in my way. You know, whereas something like this, gorgeous though it may be, prize winner two years on the trot, twice two years on the trot, I'd never get rid of this plant, but look at the space it takes up. <laughs> but in this case it's well worth it I've still got loads of buds to open on this as well lovely plant <clears throat> awarded well not awarded but you know what I mean prize winner as I say that, that got a first and a second at last year's little r flurry of shows and uh, meetings competition tables and um, a best hybrid in show this year well that's a sort of progression isn't it <laughs> But it does do well for me, this one. I could never see me not having this plant. It just does too well to even think about passing it on. But one day it's gonna get so big, it might need splitting. But that day is not here yet. It's uh, still got plenty of room to grow and should be pushing out its new growth soon too. And um, this particular dendrobium, moniliform, um, variegata, variegated leaves. Attractive plant, quite honestly. Canes can grow bigger than that. This um, went downhill and then decided it didn't like going downhill and came back uphill again and grew some nice canes, but they're not full size. It can get bigger than that. But nonetheless, it's never going to be a giant plant. And um, these blooms are not going to show their delicateness on the camera, I know, because I know what cameras do with playing with colours, but they look white, but they're not. They've got the subtlest pink tinge. Very, very, very subtle. The camera won't pick that up. Um, attractive little blooms, and again, not huge, but nice. A couple more buds to come on that one. Are you going to fall off? I don't like forcing dead leaves to come off because you leave a bit of damage if you yank them off <laughs> but I always give them a gentle tug and if they come off easily then they were ready to come off if I pull the plant off the mount trying to get the leaf off they weren't ready to come off so uh, <laughs> but yeah um, should be some signs of new growth on that one soon but yeah for a plant that um, looked like I was going to lose it, it it just perked up and don't ask me why, because I haven't got a clue. <laughs> it just did, and now it seems to be growing quite well. I've got some kikis in a pot of that that I took off last year. Um, again, I wouldn't pass those on to anybody else until I see the new growths coming out from the base, which should be soon. It produces the odd kiki, but it doesn't go mad. It's not a kiki machine like some of the flipping things are. It's difficult to say why plants chuck out loads of kikis. In theory, it's because the culture's not right. And a lot of the time, it's either too much feed, or, and or, it's growing too warm when it should be a cooler grower. Um, but that won't apply to every single plant, but it does to some. See, this is classed as a cooler grower, which is why it's not up in the roof. It's much closer to the circulating fan, so it gets a blast of moving air, which in effect is a cooling effect. So um, some of the dendrobiums are cool growers, you know, and um, if, if they get a bit too warm, they seem to go mad with the kikis, but not in all cases. And some dendrobiums I've never had a kiki on. 
but uh, yeah, some do, some don't. Uh, this orange Catley, uh, this is the Young Min Orange. This got a first this year as well. Um, these are starting to go now. You see there's one bloom about to drop over here. Um, so I don't know how long the rest of these blooms are going to last. Um, I don't think they'll make the eighth. They all opened quite close together. So um, they'll probably all fall over quite close together. That's the way they go. But yeah... Nice spikes on this, you know, multi-bloomer. Um, rather than one or two or three huge blooms, you get a lot more. And this one is pure orange. No red, no yellows. The whole thing is virtually the same colour throughout the whole of the bloom. And um, when it catches the light, it's gorgeous. So uh, no fragrance that I can detect on that one, but um, yeah. That's got two leads on it, both are pushing up new growths and um, that's just given me a thought actually, I need to water the holy clay pots today so I'll do an update on the holy clay pots as a, as a separate thing. So that'll do for this video, I'm just literally trying to catch some things that won't make it till the 8th and um, apart from the fact they're in bloom there isn't much else to say about them if you see what I mean but I wouldn't like them to be totally missed if you you know especially when you've got short-lived blooms like this you know once something's out in full bloom capture it <laughs> before it disappears you'll only regret it if you don't I've done that before I've even forgotten to take pictures of some of my blooms you know the stills that I use for the pop-ups you know and, th and then, you know, you, you talk about the plant in, a, in some form of update and you say, oh, the blooms on this are absolutely gorgeous, but I can't show you what they're like because I didn't take a picture. Duh. <laughs> yeah, so uh, recording them, at least they're captured for YouTube on the, on the videos. So I'll leave it at that for this one and um, see you next time. Now, a Roger video wouldn't be a Roger video unless I forgot something and added it on the end. This little um, Phalaenopsis uh, Zen, Zeng Min, Min Brontosaurus, my mouth won't work. It's on its last bloom now, and given that it bloomed from here, down this spike, it may extend, but I'm not going to let that spike extend because I want to mount this plant. So as soon as this bloom drops, the spike's coming off and I'm going to get that one on a mount. It's not a large Phalaenopsis. It's got good roots down in its holy clay pot. And the fact that it's in a holy clay pot, its roots are already used to a lot of air around them. Yeah, so that should just transfer onto a mount quite happily. Um, didn't have the best of root systems when it went in there, but hopefully they've improved, but I can't see them. So I won't know till I get it out of the pot. But yeah, that, that that's, bloom's not going to be there much longer. Pretty little blooms. And um, get it on a mount, and then next time that spike can uh, dangle down as in its natural form. Right, see you next time.